Please welcome NVIDIA founder and CEO, Jensen Wong. We have so much to talk about today. We have a lot of new products to show you. We're going to talk about amazing graphics. We're going to talk about amazing science, amazing AI, and amazing robots. So let's get going. Computer graphics is the driving force of the GPU. It is computationally insatiable. Recreating virtual reality is one of the most daunting computing tasks we know. And yet, on the other hand, it is an enormous industry. We want to visualize information, visualize experiences in all kinds of markets. As a result, the technology that we bring to bear and the size of the market combines into a gigantic R&D budget. It is the driving force of GPUs. This is what modern computer graphics looks like. This is what a video game would look like. And in fact, it looks pretty amazing. The difference here, what I showed you earlier, was generated one frame every many hours versus what's going on here. Produces these images at 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. From one frame in many hours to 60 frames per second, that fundamental difference has been a gap we've been trying to close for literally four decades. It's incredible to see this when you look at it in motion. And so here's an example of it in motion. What you just saw was completely rendered in real time. Now let's show it to you. So this is reflections on reflections. The, check out Captain Phasma's gun reflecting on, on uh, Phasma's chest right there. You see that? And these rays are bouncing all over this environment. These rays, every single one of those rays are bouncing off the environment. And every time it strikes a surface, it has to figure out, do I reflect? Do I refract? Do, am I absorbed? And how much is it absorbed? The more reflections and refractions, the harder it is. This is how this is recreated. Instead of a supercomputer rendering these scenes one frame every 10 hours, this is now running on one DGX computer with four Voltas in real time. This is what we can do now. $68,000 computer versus a supercomputer. So ladies and gentlemen, we're announcing the NVIDIA RTX technology. This has been 10 years in the making. We also are announcing today the world's largest GPU. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Quadro GV100, the world's first workstation GPU based on the Volta architecture. It also is the first one that has a brand new interconnect between GPUs called NVLink 2. The two GPUs connected through this new interconnect called NVLink is essentially one giant GPU. So these two GPUs working together will become a revolutionary new workstation. What makes this special is for the very first time, we can bring real-time ray tracing to the market. People can actually use it. NVIDIA Volta GPU, the RTX technology, the solvers, the architectures, the libraries, has now been integrated into three of the most important rendering APIs. One, the NVIDIA Optics. Two, Microsoft's DX12 extension called DX Ray Tracing DXR. The work that we did with them is fantastic. And then now it's also going to be available in OpenGL Vulkan. <laughs> Creators and designers are going to love this. It is amazing how many frames are rendered each year. We estimate a billion frames are rendered each year. With the NVIDIA RTX technology and the Quadro GV100, I believe the number of frames that will be rendered will jump by a factor of 10. You'll also get it done faster, but most importantly, you'll save money. The more GPUs you buy, the more money you save. That's right, the more GPUs you buy, the more money you save. This is now common sense. Now let me illustrate it to you. This is what a render farm would look like. 280 dual CPU servers. It consumes 168,000 watts. That's like 168 families. This is before 
this is after. This is with the NVIDIA RTX technology, Quadro GV100. Look at this. 14 quad GPU servers, 24,000 watts, and you save millions of dollars. Science needs supercharged computers. And that's the reason why we're building supercharged computers. The applications that I love the most of all of the work we do in HPC is the work that we do in revolutionizing modern medical imaging. Well, whether it's CT, computer tomography, magnetic res resonance, ultrasound, mammography, which is low-dose x-rays, depositron, emission, PET, each one of these modalities of medical imaging has been revolutionized recently using computational approaches. We have an initiative, a project in our company we called Project Clara. It's a medical imaging supercomputer. You could put it in the data center, you can put it in the cloud, but it's possible for us to actually virtually upgrade every single medical instrument. Let me show it to you. Okay, you take this, this ultrasound machine that's sitting in a hospital, it's already on the network anyways, you stream the ultrasound information into your data center, and your data center running this stack on top of a GPU server creates this miracle on the right, and now it's volumetric. We call this the medical imaging supercomputer. <laughs> Neural networks are growing and evolving at an extraordinary rate. What started out just five years ago with the AlexNet was eight layers deep, had millions of parameters. Well, five short years later, thousands of species have emerged. What started out just five years ago as eight layers and a few million parameters is now hundreds of layers and billions of parameters. So the world wants, the researchers all over the world wants just a gigantic GPU. And so ladies and gentlemen, today I would like to announce the world's largest GPUs. This is the world's largest GPU. This is 16 Volta equivalents connected by 12 brand new high throughput switches that the world has never seen. It's called MV switch. 14 terabytes per second of aggregate bandwidth. And let's say if a high resolution movie is 10 gigabytes, okay? So 14,000 gigabytes, 1,440 movies, more movies than any human has ever seen, could be transferred across this switch in one second, like that. Ladies and gentlemen, 14,000 movies. Every single GPU. Every single GPU can communicate to every other single GPU at 20 times the bandwidth of PCI Express. So all together, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like this. This is the NVIDIA DGX2, the world's largest GPU, the world's largest adding card, two petaflops, 512 gigabytes, and just beautiful. This, this is... Unfortunately, we know that hyperscale data centers are the most complicated computers the world has ever made. So we've dedicated just an enormous amount of resources to solving this problem for inference. And so we started working on TensorRT, which takes the output of these frameworks, which are these massively computa complex computational graphs, and we have to target for all of the parameters that I just told you about. And we gotta, we gotta make that, that network as small as possible, as high performance as possible, and yet retain all of its accuracy. Today, we're announcing the largest battery of new tools, the largest battery of new algorithms and new libraries for inference that we've ever announced. First of all, TensorRT 4.0. Brand new TensorRT, it now has the ability to handle recurrent neural networks, sequence to sequence. It has deep integration into TensorFlow. We worked with the team of Caldi Framework, the most popular voice recognition, speech recognition framework called Caldi. And then lastly, Onyx, a brand new backend that supports PyTorch, supports MXNet, supports Windows, and has the same backend for Windows ML. 
In aggregate, we're going to speed up hyperscale data centers with our GPUs with this generation of optimizations 100x. Now that we have all these accelerated frameworks and all these accelerated code, how do we deploy it into the world's data centers? Well, it turns out there's this thing called Kubernetes. Kubernetes is it's an orchestration layer that orchestrates the workload that's coming in from the cloud and orchestrated across the resources of the hyperscale data center. OK, let me show it to you. This is Flowers, of course, running on, on CPUs, four images per second, and the fastest uh, Skylake that we have. This is one GPU. One GPU. Let's Kubernetes this thing. Yep, we got it running in Kubernetes. That's a large load, so we need to handle that load. So what we do is we can ask Kubernetes to say, hey, let's make multiple replicas of that same container. And so I'm going to add eight replicas in. You're going to see them come in. And I'm going to add them into the load balancer. And as I add them in, you're going to see it just get faster. Wow. Not only can we run it in our local on-prem data center, but we can scale and we can burst into the cloud. So let's take a look at that right now. So I'm going to add four and more from the cloud. And what I'm going to do now is show you self-healing. So I'm going to kill off four of these GPUs. And then those AWS GPUs are going to jump right in, and the performance is going to come back up. There they go down. Sometimes it's that fast. <laughs> The transportation industry is the largest industry, one of the largest industries in the world, $10 trillion large. And we believe that someday everything that moves will be autonomous or have autonomous capabilities. Safety is the most important thing. Just imagine this. You've got these cars with all these different sensors. Some of a radar that could sense motion, LIDAR that can measure depth but don't see very well in light and snow and fog cameras with super high resolution but can't see in the dark, infrared that can see in the dark but doesn't have very high resolution. We take all of these sensors and we fuse them together into a super sensor. But in order to do this and to compute it in such a high rate of speed as the car is moving and to take action so quickly is incredibly hard. And what NVIDIA is dedicating ourselves to do is to solve the problem from end to end. This infrastructure inside NVIDIA is called the perception infrastructure. It's a massive investment, and it's just something that I'm so proud of. At the end of it, it produces networks. We already have 10 networks inside our car. The self-driving car is not one network. It's a whole bunch of networks, and there'll be a whole bunch more. We already have 10. By the time that we ship in a couple of years, call it 20 or 30. And, and the, reason, the reason why it's so hard, we're trying to create a AV computing system so that the entire transportation industry can take advantage of this massive investment that we're making and create the future of autonomous vehicles. And so we created one architecture roadmap, and it basically starts like this. Two years ago, we introduced DrivePX Parker, and then we created a four chip solution for DrivePX2, which is the development system for most of the autonomous vehicles that you see around the world. Then two years later, this year, we created the Drive Xavier. Basically, we took four chips, the computational capability of those four chips in those 300 watts, and we shrunk it into one miracle chip. Then from Xavier, we, added, we created a four-chip system, two Xaviers and two Voltas together. Another running at a very low temperature and voltage, another 300 watt computer emerged. And that 300 watt computer is being used in robot taxi, self-driving car system development all over the world. We're sampling both of them today. Both of them will be in production by the end of this year. But we're not stopping here. Our next generation is called Orin. And we're gonna take basically those eight chips, two, two drive Pegasuses, and we're gonna put it into a couple of Orins. It will create also an amazing processor for autonomous driving cars. Auto grade, super energy efficient, fully ASLD, huge investment. <laughs> NVIDIA's drive roadmap. Civilization drives 
about 10 trillion miles per year. In the United States, 770 accidents happen from 1 billion miles. And so the question that you have to ask yourself is, how confident are you when your car, your fleet of test cars of 20, over one year has driven about a million miles? Clearly, the amount of coverage, scenario coverage and miles coverage is just not possible in real life. And this is where NVIDIA's skill can really shine. We know how to build virtual reality worlds. And, and the, the key here is that the, the fidelity of the simulation has to be sufficiently high that the sensor stack, all the software that we create, would just operate as they would in real life. And notice we're detecting all the cars, we're detecting all the lanes. But here's the amazing thing. Earlier, the video that you saw were real cars in the real world. We didn't change one line of code IOTA. And it's running on exactly the same Drive PX, Drive Xavier, and Drive Pegasus computer that we would drive in the car. This image generator is generating the world. Now, this image generator, in the context of a video game, this image generator is a gaming PC, and the person that would be driving the car, we replace that person with an artificial intelligence AV computer. We call this Drive Constellation. We're going to have thousands of constellations. These virtual reality worlds will all be running simultaneously, and hopefully we could cover a large, large coverage of scenarios. With just 10,000 constellations, we can cover 3 billion miles a year. In the future, robots will augment and will assist us in all kinds of different places. And so we've created a platform like we've done with Drive. We call this Isaac. Today, we're going to release the first little version of that. This is such a great achievement. And so basically, in the future, you're going to be doing simulation as a development system because these robots have to work in a three-dimensional world. And so we create a three-dimensional world simulator, simulator we call the Isaac Lab. In the Isaac Lab, we will develop the perception capability, the localization capability, the mapping capability, and the planning capability that is necessary for robots and autonomous machines to navigate these complex worlds. When you're done with the simulator, that hardware should be able to run the entire software stack, and we call that the Isaac SDK. Look, I have one thing I want to share with you. This is something we've been working on, and, and it's just so exciting. I thought that, that, that as, a, as a close, I would invite you into NVIDIA's lab. Okay, but imagine there is a car in the world somewhere, and we need to help it. We just created a virtual reality car. We, we call this Drive Lab, and this is where we have a, a virtual car and we can see sensors coming in from the vehicle, the remote vehicle that needs help. Tim is currently in holodeck. He is looking at this virtual world, and you see the video that's being piped in? That is literally live. Let's show that he has control over the car as well. So there's the real car out there. And so Tim, if you can turn the steering wheel a little bit, we can see that we've got... Oh, come on, cut it out! Come on, that's fun. Okay, so I think we've seen this, and uh, we can have him take off and actually drive the car. As you can see, he's blocked. There's a vehicle here that's doing some unloading. He can now operate this vehicle around this obstacle and maybe take it to a safe spot in a parking lot for us. And hopefully all... <laughs> so we're doing this really slowly and safely in a cordoned off area here. And, and, and Tim's view is very broad. He can see all three screens and and get a full perspective of, of everything that's going on in the car. In the future, we can, we can represent all kinds of LiDAR systems and everything. You know, it, like it, what Tim is experiencing right now, he's sitting inside the car, and he feels like he's inside the car, and he feels the car around him. And that's why he's able to, look at that, he parked in a parking space. <laughs> nice job, Tim. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's great having all of you here. Thanks for your support, and have a great GTC.